In this cap, we will focus on what teachers do to develop and implement high-quality phonics instruction. First, we will review some key terms and concepts for phonics instruction from Part 1. Then, we will identify the big ideas that you need to know about why phonics instruction is so important. We will also take a look at why phonics instruction should be systematic and explicit. We will also see some examples of actual teachers and students engaged in various kinds of phonics instruction. Before we dive into new information about this topic, let's review some essential background knowledge from previous CAPS. Decoding is the ability to convert a word from print to speech. Decoding is also sometimes referred to as word attack skills or word identification skills. Encoding is the ability to convert a word from speech to print. The term phonics is a teaching method that helps students relate spoken sounds to written symbols. In part one on phonics instruction, you learned about the sequence of how students reach automatic word recognition. This was illustrated using this road to reading words model. Now that we have reviewed the background knowledge we'll need for this cap, let's identify the big ideas that will guide our understanding of phonics instruction. In part one, we said that the aim of phonics instruction is to help students gain decoding skills that will help them become fluent and proficient readers. Now we will also see how and why phonics instruction should be taught in a systematic and explicit way. You will also learn that phonics instruction is just one component of a high quality comprehensive reading program. Students do a variety of word work tasks in order to support fluency skills and proficient reading. Research has shown that students who receive systematic and explicit phonics instruction become better readers than students who do not experience systematic or explicit phonics instruction or those who do not receive any phonics instruction. There are a few features of systematic and explicit phonics instruction that you need to know. First, let's look at what features make up systematic phonics instruction. When you teach phonics and decoding skills systematically, you are teaching in a clear and logical sequence. This means that new skills are built on existing skills and that tasks are arranged and assigned and taught from the simplest to the most complex. Using an explicit approach to phonics instruction means that you would explain relationships, skills, rules, and patterns clearly and that skills and tasks are always clearly modeled for students. This means avoiding ambiguity and vagueness whenever you explain steps and model skills and tasks and that, at least at first, explicit phonics instruction doesn't need to include student inferences. This is because students could mistakenly develop skills ineffectively or perform tasks incorrectly. So we've learned about the types of instruction that teachers think about and use uh, when they implement phonics instruction. Now let's think about what do the students do? Activities or learning experiences that students do during a phonics or decoding skills lesson are sometimes called word work or word study. Some well-known word work activities with early elementary students include word or sound sorting, word building, and segmenting using Elkin in boxes. Let's look at what's involved in each of those activities. Word or sound sorting activities call students' attention and learning to word elements, parts, and patterns. In this type of activity, students actively categorize words or sounds in order to identify their similarities and differences. For example, the teacher may ask students to sort a group of words by their beginning sound, or ask students to identify words that use a silent E from a larger group of words. Let's see this type of activity in action. In this clip, the teacher, Dr. Payne, is working with a small group of kindergarten students on sorting words by how many sounds each word has. Now we are going to really, it's really important to hear sounds, right, to read. And so this number two is going to be, if you hear two sounds, then you're going to put the picture here, okay? Okay, we're, we're sorting pictures by how many sounds they have. Two sounds, put up a number two. Okay, cool. And three sounds, good. And four sounds. All right. Raise your hand and tell me, what does it mean? What is rabbit talk? Alexis. Fast. Fast. Okay, so like if we say this word, we're going to say it really ice. fast. We're going to say ice, ice, right? Really fast. Okay, so what is turtle talk? Um, McKinley. Blue. 
slow. We stretch it out and we say ice, right? Okay, ice. cool. All right, so here we go. First, let's be the rabbit. Ready, go. Ice. 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 Everybody, let's do it again. Ready, go. Ice. ice. All right, let's stretch it out like a turtle. Ice. Let's count the sounds we just heard. I two. two. So point where you would put it. Put it right there. Word building is another frequently used word work activity. In this kind of activity, students see and experience the effects on a word when a letter is either added, taken away, or substituted. When teachers model or use this activity, they typically only make one phoneme change at a time. In other words, each word in a sequence is different from the one before it by only one letter or sound. This is an example of going from simplest to more complex tasks. For example, add the letter H to the word add. Then you can substitute the letter S for the letter H to form the word sad. Here's another example. Start with the word sit. Now delete the letter S to make the word it. Then add a new phoneme at the beginning to make the word pit. This process of adding, taking away, and substituting phonemes is also called phoneme manipulation. Another way to work on phoneme manipulation, and also another very frequently used tool in phonics lessons, is called Elkanen boxes. Elkanen boxes are a visual way for students to segment phonemes and then manipulate them in a word. Using Elkanen boxes, students can demonstrate either their ability to segment phonemes, which is decoding a word, or their ability to blend phonemes, which is encoding. Here's an example of what Elkanen boxes might look like for segmenting and blending the phonemes that make up the word map. Each phoneme goes in a separate box. If we were using a word in this activity with a digraph, like ch or ch, then both letters in the digraph would go in one box together, because the box represents one sound or phoneme. Let's see this in action as another example. In this clip, the teacher is using Elkanen boxes to help her student count the correct number of phonemes, identify and segment those phonemes, and then finally blend or spell out the word. Feet. Ready? Feet. How many sounds? Three. Three sounds. So I want to make three boxes. One box, two boxes, three boxes. Okay, ready? Feet. Eat. Eat. What do you hear? F. Mm -hmm. And then what? E. And how do you spell the E sound? Two E. Two E's. Eat. G. Perfect. Okay, let's er hold the pen. I'm going to erase these. Because I think we can come up with another one. Ooh, I've got one. This one's going to be a little trickier. Here, I'll hold that so you can count. Sweet. Are you ready? Ooh, there's a little tricky sound in there. It's hard to hear. Sweet. Four sounds. So let's count those again just to be sure. Are you ready? Sweet. How many? Sweet. How many sounds? Four. Four sounds. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. What do you hear? S H. Just an S. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. We hear S something. Let's figure out the sounds. Okay, so that's your S. Now let's figure out what comes next. Sweet. Very good. You want to do one more? Uh, let me think about it for a minute. Oh, I know a good one. Sleep. I'm going to hold the pen because you write too fast. You get ahead of me. Ready? Sleep. 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 Four sounds. Four sounds. Let's count it again. Ready? Sleep. Ooh, good counting. 
four sounds. Okay, sleep. Ready? Sleep. What do you hear? Sleep. What do you hear? And which one? S. And S. Good for you. Now let's review all the information on phonics instruction that we covered in this cap. We began by identifying these three big ideas about teaching phonics. Then we identified the key features of high quality, systematic, and explicit phonics instruction. Then we looked at three types of student learning activities that teachers use in their phonics instruction. That's all for part two on phonics instruction. Thanks for watching.